Hey everybody, this is Ben. And Nora. Welcome back to the Midwest Model Shop. This is take two because our camera decided it was not important to record audio the first time around. Winning. Full disclosure, we're doing it again. We're doing it again. <laughs> All right, so this episode is going to be pretty short. Uh, what I'm going to do is basically wrap up the installation of all of our little fiber optics for the portholes on the ship, minus a couple. Uh, the big emphasis is on the large 3.5 millimeter or 3 millimeter portholes that are vertical. They're not actually round, they have like this special insert that goes in. I have an aftermarket kit that I use. Uh, turns out, because I misplaced the instructions, I made some mistakes and then I found the instructions and I corrected it in the other part, and you'll get to see all that. And that actually works out and I think provides some options for those of you building this mostly out of the box. Then we're going to go ahead and actually install the uh, LED lighting that we showed, I think it was in, in video 4, and get that locked in. Nora helps out with some of the fo footage there. We'll just show you how our internal setup is going to be as we move along with this whole thing. Um, and that's, yeah, that's the big stuff, right? Okay, uh, yeah, and a shout out to our IPMS Lakes Region Scale Modelers Society. Yes, we're part of a society now. I'm a society gal now, <laughs> have you know. Um, we went to one of their meetings. It was the first uh, since everything has finally gotten sort of back to normal. And it was a really awesome meeting. Hi, John, our hey, John. president, El Presidente. Uh, it was really awesome. So we encourage you to go to their um and join their Facebook group? Yeah, right? they have a Facebook group if you're in the uh, Midwest region, the, up, the Upper Greater Lakes area. The IPMS um, Lakes Region Scale Modelers, um, or one that's near you. Yeah, they, they're all over the U.S. and the world and things like that. I encourage you to, to uh, join a group like that if you're able to. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and then figures, right? Uh, yeah, if you are not aware, we are inviting you all to be a part of our build. You can send us figures to put on the ship. If you are interested in doing that, email us at the Midwest Model Shop at gmail.com and we will send you the address uh, where you can send the figures uh, directly to us. And we've received many already that are really awesome and we've gotten some more that we're going to feature in this video. And I can, here comes one of the dogs. Here come the dogs. <laughs> um, I can tell you, it is, for me, I get so excited. It's like Christmas when we get those figures and Everybody's really knocked our socks off with the detail and um, the creativity, and we've gotten some really unique things, not just people, um, to add to the ship. So it's really exciting. Yep. So I'll go ahead and put the email address one more time in the description down below. And we got a couple of, uh, well, a bunch of figures that just got sent in by a couple of folks here. So let's take a look at those, and then we'll move on with the build. So this first box that we are opening with figures comes from a gentleman named Mike. Fox. He's excited to be a part of our voyage and we are excited to have him because these figures are super cute. We've got a little doggy here. Kind of looks like a chow. Big and fluffy. All kinds of colors and detail. Love it. And another little doggy laying down. And they're gonna have some they're gonna have another doggy friend because someone else sent us a dog too. Yeah, we're, and gonna, another, we're gonna have a whole collection of another doggies. little shipment, which I think is awesome because the Titanic, as far as I'm concerned, is pet friendly. Uh, this is cute, another dog. And something we've not received yet, which I think is was really creative on his part. I'm really excited about these. I don't know where we're gonna put them, but they're definitely going on there. Seagulls. Yeah. And, oh. Make sure your kids hang on to their hot dogs. Right, and fries. And uh, fries. Expertly are, painted. Little seagulls that we'll put on a little railing somewhere or something. I love those. And this beautiful little blue fancy lady. Love her. She's got a hat on. And a little boy playing, which I think is adorable. These are so tiny and they have so much detail and color. He really. Stop it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Zoomed in with the. so that you could see things. Uh, this is the infamous little boy with his toy top. Oh, and his little stick and the little top on the ground there that you see in one of the photographs just turned out absolutely awesome. There's the seagulls and the little dogs. Oh my gosh. I'm looking in the camera lens and they look amazing. And there's our fancy lady. Just an outstanding job. Really nice stuff. Thank you so much, Mike Fox from Kentucky. Appreciate it, Mike. 
So I love this. This came from a gentleman named Chuck. He used this cute stationery that actually looks like it came from the Titanic, but look what he sent us. Oh, amazing. <laughs> okay. First We're of be all, rich, folks. First of all, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> the big time. The, the heart of the ocean is in here, people. Um, Last video. He, he made it a <laughs> It's been a slice. So he did say it is not to scale, but it is an amazing piece. Um, obviously, 3D printed, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's Something. really cool. So it's going to be a nice little keepsake for us. And he enclosed the figures um, for us inside of it. Get him out. That's the shot. The only diamond you're going to see in this here, fellas, is right there in that <laughs> finger. Okay, so let's start with this one. Show, show the front. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this incredible box. People are going to ask about these boxes, Chuck, so uh, please tune in and um, answer those questions. If so you it still says right here on the car bottom. With sled. Yeah, yeah, this Titanic car so with the sled. So it must come in this little set. This is amazing. Or, I don't know how he's, yeah. I, I don't saw know. the cars that we had when we did the other video, but check this out. Look at this. He printed up his own Renault and the carriage or sled that it was uh, lifted up on. I'm not going to pull it out. Uh, right now, but super it's fragile. super fragile, super detailed, excellent paint job, just just incredible, really great. Presentation is amazing. Yep, that's awesome. Then there's right, this magic box. These. This is nuts. <laughs> I love this. So you got that, and the lid comes off. All right. So first thing here. So he's got he's printed. This is the image from the ship, and those what you see there in blue is couple the, with is a baby. the couple with the baby. And yeah. lo and behold, there's a couple with a baby. There's the man. There's the woman. Look at the little pram, the little carriage with the big wheels. Look at her fancy Just dress. Immaculate. Love it. All yep. that detail. And here are some extras. Yeah. So Chuck went ahead and said that he printed a bunch of extras in case anything was damaged or broke. <laughs> The detail on these is this 3d printer that you're using Chuck, and the and the quality of prints here is immaculate i hope he's available to answer questions because you know we're going to get questions about these pieces because they really are amazing check out all right so everybody remembers this rose. picture of rose from the ship and then if you flip it up looking sharp look at this here she is he Dang actually it. there she is just like on the cover just amazing just incredible and then what we got ladies. here? Ladies. Yeah, two ladies. And beautiful. Look at the detail. Blue and green dresses. Just gorgeous. We'll get close I'm up so to these uh, when we put them on the ship. Hold on to your hats, folks. So what do we got? What's this next one? Show the, show the cover. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now obviously Chuck saw our very first video, and he was moved. By my art piece <laughs> that I did, and he went ahead and uh, and sent and sent three D printed Nike Rose. <laughs> no, th that's me. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, some of my features have been enhanced a little bit here, but that's totally me. Are you sure? Totally. I know me when I see me. No, no. Be sexy. Okay. All right. That was cool. This. Look at this. Look at this. My mother was a huge Where's Waldo fan. He's going on the boat. And look at the paint job there. Stripes, got his stick, waving the hat. That's awesome. awesome. Yep. Just awesome. Then Nora's personal favorite coming up next, right? Not. What? Not. What? Sorry. Sorry, Chuck. He's just not my favorite. Oh, Borat. Yoink. <laughs> look at this doofus. <laughs> He's a doofus. But... Chuck's not a doofus because he really went all out with the paint detail. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, you can't just put a swimsuit like that on anybody. That's awesome. That takes some raw talent right there. That I'm really impressed. Is nuts. He'll go somewhere. We'll yeah, go he somewhere will. For Chuck, sure. this is amazing. Thank you so much for sending this in. And, folks, like I said, feel free if you want to be part of this model build to paint your own figures up and send them in. The email address is down below. We'll be doing this for a little bit while longer. We do have a lot of figures now uh, to put on the ship. We do. Um, all right. Well, that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into the build. All right, everybody. So moving back along, we're on the port side, and we've basically finished filling in all of the porthole lenses, except for these big ones right here. They're three millimeter, uh, well, close to three millimeter in size. And the reason I stopped is because these portholes in real life are not like just round holes that you see on the ship. Uh, they're supposed to look like this. One of my reference photos here, so you can see 
they swing open uh, and they're recessed and they have like vertical frames on them uh, and they're recessed quite a bit. I got another picture here. So this is out of the book, The Titanic Ship Magnis Magnificent, but you can see that uh, they're recessed and they've got, you know, again, the vertical uh, lines on it. They're not totally round. So what do we do about this if we're building the kit pretty much out of the box? All right, the first thing that you can do uh, is go back to the same place that we got all these little um, fiber optic cable things from uh, Lighthouse LEDs and I've got here some three millimeter uh, tubing from them. And if you go ahead, you can cut them out and get yourself, you know, your little piece like this. You're gonna have to buff the end like Nora showed you how to do in video number four so it's all shiny like a piece of glass. You drill out three mil and then you can go ahead and install it. Now there's a, and then once they're installed, what I would do, cause you're just gonna end up with a big, you know, round hole like this. I'd leave it kind of flush to the surface here. And you can either use a piece of tape or just very carefully with the brush, put two little black lines on either side of it. And that's gonna simulate the look really, really well. And I think you'll be really happy with that. And that's really inexpensive. 10 feet of this is like $1.95, which is way more than you need. But I did some hunting around on the internet. And what I found was this little kit right here from Scale Warships. If you go to scalewarships.com and in their little search bar type in Titanic, uh, this will pop up. And what you can see here is there are the little brass inserts that you want. They also include a gazillion little cutout pieces of glass. Now, and then of course you can see here uh, additional photo etch doors. If this is the inside of the doors, if you want to go ahead and pose these open, um, it's nice. It's just a little extra detail here. And this this wasn't too much. I think it was like 15 British pounds for that. And then with shipping, it ended up being like 20 something. So not a big deal. Um, so this is where though I got to talk about this. I made my first big mistake. Well, not a big mistake, but I made a mistake, and it, and it's okay. So when I uh, got these, long story short, I ended up getting a couple sets. You get about 250 glass windows here, and then I don't know how many of these things, so that you can have some little accents. Uh, the first set that I got, I accidentally misplaced the instructions. And the instructions are pretty decent, and they tell you to drill out a three millimeter hole. Well, I had not done that. I'd left the holes here that you see, and I, I misplaced the instructions on the other kit that I opened up. So when I went and pulled out these little plastic pieces, they didn't fit. And I guess I just was having a bad weekend or something. Instead of going ahead and uh, just drilling these out to three mil and then trying to put that piece in, I drilled them out to three mil and I cut all of these pieces and I installed them. Um, now it matches, but I also kind of screwed up in the sense that uh, I left these not nearly as deep as they were supposed to be to match the pictures, uh, but it actually turns out all right. So let me show you that. So these are some that are done up close. I got to clean them up still. Uh, and this one looks like I got to put a little more paint around it right there. And that one, it's going to have some light leak. But generally speaking, it looks fine. And I did this on the whole thing. And then I pulled out this other bag and realized, oh my goodness, you know, I, I easily could have gone ahead and, and used the parts that came with it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install these things using the kit completely on this back quarter here. But these turn out okay because we're zoomed in pretty close. Get back out to here and very quickly you can't tell. Uh, but you do want them recessed and I didn't really get them recessed. So yeah, that was a little bit of a mistake. but. I'm not upset about how it turned out. And it's gonna be okay because this whole area up here where there's uh, where it turns white and you have those same photo etch pieces, they're very prevalent and we, we'll get them right up there. We'll get them all recessed and put in at the right spot. But in the meantime, let's move to the back of the ship here and start out with a three millimeter drill bit and we'll pick our hole of choice. I just go real slow because I don't want to introduce a whole lot of slop into the hole other than what's there. Break through. Boom, there's your 
three millimeter hole. So here's the piece that goes inside of there and it is tapered slightly. I don't know if you can make that out in there. So I put the small side in first. The instructions tell you to file the hole as necessary uh, to get it to shape. But a three mil works out really well. I just pressed it on in there and this one went really well. And I'm gonna try, give it a little bit of a shove. There we go. You wanna have it be slightly recessed. Let me see if I can show you that up close. There we go, I think you can see that now. See how there's basically that little half moon shape there? That's where it's recessed in the hole. So you wanna go ahead and do that for each one of these. And that and it popped right in there, worked out really well. Okay, after that's done, uh, you're gonna need to go ahead and pre-paint a bunch of these little photo etch pieces. Do the best you can to cut it out. Then I've got um, evergreen canopy glue adhesive. It's white and it dries clear. And what I do is I place a little bit on a piece of cardboard and then I grab a toothpick and just go ahead and kind of fill in along, around the edges here. This is nice because you can see what you're doing. It'll totally dry clear. You don't have to worry about that. And just kind of work your way around the edge like so. Then you got to reposition the hull here. I have this stand that I built so you can see the ship's working out nicely here. And then if I flip it around, put the ship back down. Now it's tilted up. Uh, let's see. So you can see it's flat. And then we got our area back over here to work on and things are tipped down. That's our spot. I use my toothpick and drop in my porthole frame, we'll call it, like that. And then you just want to double check that it's fairly straight. Obviously up and down would be the best, like so. It's a little crooked, my lens is a little crooked, but that's okay, it's gonna work. And just let it sit up. So all you gotta do, set up, is go ahead and repeat that all along here to fill those in. So let's go ahead and knock that out. Okay, we've got our parts installed and the paint is drying. Uh, let's zoom in as best as we can right here. I think some of this stuff turned out really well. I'm gonna try and keep it in focus there, but you can see slightly recessed uh, as best as we can, looking like the real thing. There you go. Uh, I wish I had paid attention and caught the instructions beforehand. It was way easier to install these pieces than uh, the three millimeter um, LED strips. So definitely going to get these parts right when we put them up here in the white spot because it's really, it'll stand out more. Now we go all the way down here to the bow, a little bit of a roll. Uh, we've got the ones that I put in up here. Now I didn't do as well of a job on some of these because they weren't as recessed as far as they're supposed to. And again, this is um, not the discs that come with the kit. This is the three millimeter LED that I put in myself. You can see here those big pieces I did on the port side or starboard side as well. This was definitely a lot faster and it looks better, especially at that angle right there. So we'll get that right uh, when we move on to the upper part. But now we need to get a little bit more serious about lighting the ship up. I know we talked about that a little bit in uh, video four, but yeah, now it's time to start moving ahead. So yeah, pressing on. All right, back in action here. So we're moving on to installing the lights that we saw in the previous uh, episode, I think episode four, and getting that set up. So I'm leaving this up on the screen here so you guys can all get a good look at it. These are the LED lights that I'm going to try and use. They have a nice, natural, kind of yellow luminescent hue to them. They're not too bright. They're labeled warm white. Uh, they're T copper tronics. This is it. I got these on Amazon. Uh, so I don't have a specific link. I would just, you know, go ahead and search for these. I bought two boxes worth because I wasn't sure how many we need. They're 16.4 feet, um, flexible LED strips lightings and this is some of the statistics in the back. What I really like about it though is 
uh, five meters long, sorry, total, five meters long. What I really like about it is you can cut these and solder the connections back together with wires uh, to connect stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and get this opened up and we're gonna start installing it uh, in the ship. Let's, let's move on and do that. All right, so here's our LED lights on. Hopefully you can see, maybe I can shut off this light. There we go. They're a nice yellow amber hue. They're not too bright. I really like them. Uh, let's zoom in here. I'm gonna do some real basic stuff. Hopefully you guys get this. So right here is a spot that you can cut this because I don't need 15 meters or 16 feet, six, almost 16 and a half feet, five meters worth of lights inside the ship. So what you could do is take your scissors and cut them right here. Now, these two points are meant to be connected. So if you needed to, you could go ahead and solder a wire from here to there on the gap for the plus and the minus, and you connect these LED strips. And then you can go ahead and arrange them any way you want. Now, this uh, kit came with these fancy little wires all ready to go. It came with some long ones, and then it came with a couple of little short ones, which is great. It's gonna save me a little time. Uh, so, but if you take the red wire, we'll call that plus, so this little white thing's up. There's this black clip on the end right here that moves in and out. And there's a slot in there like so. So we'll have the red wire be plus. And you slide it in here like that, push it in and then straight and then push that black part on the back. And then you go to the other end of the lead and then you got your your strip that you cut off same thing make sure the plus side sorry goes into the plus put it together and now it's illuminated too and so what this will let you do is say have these like so inside of the bowels of the ship, which is what we're looking to do. So let's go ahead and start that process. Okay, back in action. I want to show you what I've done. First of all, we have a hole, large hole drilled in uh, the ship that has let the cord go through about yay far. We'll be dealing with that down the road. And then I've gone ahead and just taped up mock taped up where I want the light to be. And as you can see, I've used my little fancy Nancy connectors explained earlier on the corners. And we'll go all the way back to the end right there. And then it ends like so. So on the back of this, there's a sticky adhesive that uh, you can pull and stick on. And I've used that in the past. It'll work fairly well, but I, I don't trust it in the long run. So what I'm going to do, now that I'm happy with this arrangement thus far, is two things. Pull the sticky adhesive off, apply this, and stick it into place. I'll probably come back with tape to help reinforce it, and I'll leave it. And I'm also going to come back with a hot glue gun and put some little blobs of hot glue on to help pull it into place. Lastly, right here, there's a plus and minus right there. I'm going to solder two wires on it here and I'm going to leave them long so that they will come up and out into the upper decks uh, in case. And I'll explain in case um, in a few minutes here. Let's let's go ahead and peel this on and stick this into position. All right so someone's probably going to want to see this. So you start peeling it like that. All right, so we'll get it going. Let me come over the top here. And I'm gonna, so I've got it going like so. I'm just gonna go ahead and start in a spot and stick it down. It doesn't need to be super duper accurate here at this point. But now that it's in place, I'll just lift my tape up out of the way and I'll just kind of pull this along. And I'll take a little section here and I'll push it down, put my tape back because I'm still going to use it to help, and then we'll put the next piece of tape up and out of the way and pull this along a little more, and I'll take 
take this off. Get a little tension. Like so. Stick the tape back down. It's all gonna help. Alright, and it gets a little tricky back up in here, but you're basically just gonna continue to follow the same angle. At this point, actually I'll pull the rest of this off. I'm only my scissors here, I think at the very end it, it doesn't like to come loose. So, all right, now we're down, we got our tape in place. So now the whole thing is stuck down just with the adhesive and comes up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my hot glue gun and we'll put some dabs here and there of some hot glue just to kind of keep it semi-permanent. I mean, this isn't gonna get rattled around, but I'm worried about it just coming loose and going off on some funny angle, you know, five years from now and then it just, when the lights come on, it looks funny. All right, press on the hot glue. Okay, so uh, this is all in. I put in some hot super glue, and then uh, I issued the hot glue gun, so I gotta finish up this little area right here. But what I forgot to show you guys uh, here is I went ahead and soldered two wires onto the end here, and I, I'm gonna secure that with more hot glue. Uh, I checked my connections already, and I left plenty of slack to come on up into the ship. This is if I end up needing more lighting. I know right away, some of you are gonna, of course you need more lighting, Ben, there's more stuff up here. Uh, I'm gonna talk about why I might not need that here in a few minutes. So the next thing though I wanna do, so let's let's throw this piece up here, our aft well deck. Whoop, that's not the aft well deck. There we go. Here's our aft well deck. It's in position. Now we have all of these lights right along here. And some folks I know, I saw were having trouble with this poop deck on here. They were having trouble with light leak coming out underneath here. And so the way we're gonna solve that problem is by not putting light up here at all. Uh, what we're gonna do instead is take a piece of our one millimeter, cause that's the size of these windows, LED, uh, or fiber optic, and uh, I think it was Voltar is his name. He actually suggested this. One of, one of the viewers suggested this. We're just going to run the fiber optic through here, and I'm going to drill a little hole. I'm going to bend it down and have it point down into the inside of the ship where all of our LED tape light is. And that should create the glow that we want. I'll go ahead and get that mocked up here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, back in action here. Hope you can see there's my little fiber optic LED. I just cut the length of it. And I you know, pushed it through the porthole. It's not, whoops, I'm sorry. It's not glued in yet. I gotta get it flush there. But that's that's where she goes. And as you can see here, it's behind uh, the bulkhead. Oh, the air finally shut off. Sorry about the air in this video. It's just been insanely hot outside and uh, it's super important that we be cool. What are you laughing about over there? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, so there we go, the cover's on. And if this works, see what I mean? So there we go, lights are on, and look at that. There is an illuminated porthole. The other one's not, let me shut this light off. I'll probably stand out a little bit better. There you go, that's it. Um, so all the portholes are in except for a few right here. I ran out of fiber optics just a little bit. We gotta get those in and we'll, we'll fill that up. Uh, as you can see up here, no light leaks coming from underneath because obviously up through there there is, but you know, there can't be because we don't have any lights. So the LED is gonna bend right there and the ones in the back will be pretty easy. So we gotta continue putting those in. Uh, I realize some of you have mentioned before, they're like, Ben, not all the lights are on. We're gonna see about modulating uh, the lights so that um, they're not all the same intensity. 
and we may end up blocking some of them off. I know some of you have gone out of your way to research exactly which rooms were and were not occupied. That's fantastic. We're not worried about that. Uh, but one thing is for sure, you do have to put all the portholes in. Maybe not all the lights are on, but definitely all the portholes existed. So that's taken care of that. Or if I let them all on, they're all gonna be on. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> that too, yep. So, uh, anywho's, like I said, that, that takes care of this area right up there. You can still see that light's illuminated. I gotta put the rest of them in, and then we gotta do the same thing up here in the bow. Now, obviously, there's still some tidying up to be done. And inside here, um, so back to these wires, like I was talking about before. This is to run up, and if we need to, we'll put more LED lights up here in the surface. But see how well this worked out. I'm wondering if I can get away with putting this part of the structure in and running LED lights in positions that would be just like light bulbs in the real ship and then running the lines down into here to get their light up and illuminated. Uh, we're going to experiment with that and see. Honestly, I don't have this all completely planned out. I, I don't like the idea of putting giant LED lights up in the superstructure. I think it's too powerful. Uh, I like that these lights are just bright enough. I like that they have uh, yellow incandescence to them. Um, yeah, the only other comment I was going to make, uh, we also, I got to build my display stand. I think we're going to go ahead and do, cause some of you were so appalled in previous builds that I just would epoxy the ship to the base. We're going to stick some magnets inside here in a bunch of places so that this can uh, stick to the stand. The only other comment I wanted to make before we press on is this is the plug, this is the cord that came with, and it's only about two feet long. Uh, it's painfully short, but that's okay. Um, it's, it's long enough that it allows us to do what we need to do for the build, and when I get my stand built, maybe we'll have this run out and go to like a, a rocker switch on and off, and then I can get an actual long cable, and we'll run that down to the plug, uh, and we'll put that uh, in the wall. This plug, or I'll get a replacement, 120, 240 volts, and you can see 12 volt DC out to 2 amp, which is good. That's really good, the, tw uh, the 2 amp. It's plenty for the LEDs that are in there. Okay, uh, I think that kind of surmises what we've done in the next episode. We'll tidy up all this stuff, and we'll have to get the for aft and forward well decks installed. Um, because when they're done, we can go ahead and get all of the uh, LEDs in here, or not LEDs, I'm sorry, fiber optics installed in here, both fore and aft, uh, and, and secured in position. And then we could start moving along and building our ship up, which I'm finally excited to be able to do. All right, that's it for now. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you soon.